Howdy y'all, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about rocks, geology, and stonework. It's often shaped the earliest civilizations and societies that are founded worldwide, but what can we find when we look below the surface as we begin to dig into the rock which has shaped humanity? To some, the rock formations we will see and look at today not only lead us to these miraculous photographs, they're beautiful and mysterious, but they're seemingly timeless in age, and the rock itself, as we dive into it, can also speak to us in a new language. This language is the job of the geologist, to find the true nature, the true voice of the rock which has shaped the foundations of modern civilization. As Paul D. Filippo puts it, and I quote, Once anthropology and geology had opened up the pre-record-keeping darkness of humanity's long, sustained infancy as suitable grounds for speculation, writers began trying to imagine human existence as it must have been with only Stone Age technology, end quote. The geologist sees millions of years of growth contained within layer upon layer of rock. As we will see today, rock and the naturally occurring formations of our earthly plane have been utilized for millennia as strategic locations for proto-societies to thrive. The first men not only used rock to build tools, but they also used rock as destination markers, with unique rock formations and rock structures often designating the path for travel. The first men, for lack of a better term, spoke to us through the rock. As societies advanced, it was the rock formations and mountainsides, the rolling plains and hilltops, created by the ages-old clashing of rock, of tectonic plates, forming raised surfaces for the earliest kingdoms to arise. Beyond that, we also have even more mysterious cultures, which appeared to thrive within the rock itself, using naturally occurring and hand-carved caves to create pockets of underground or cave populations in small orders all around the ancient world, as told in myth and legend. Even the American mound builders were said to have sprawling mounds which interconnected to one another through underground chambers. To the mysterious nature of the rock which has shaped the earliest civilizations, where normal science disregards them as anomalies, esoteric researchers like Helena Blavatsky are quoted as saying, and I quote, The secret doctrine is the common property of the countless millions of men born under various climates in times which history refuses to deal and to which esoteric teachings assigns dates incompatible with the theories of geology and anthropology today." End quote. This essentially claims that the earliest civilizations, the mysterious, advanced, technologically sound civilizations which we research today, which go against the current narrative, simply cannot be ignored, and using things like geology, some claim that the current accepted timeline can be changed. How did the infrastructure of so many buildings seemingly become fused with the rock below? I say this as we look through many different photographs in this video, but one will be the castles of Germany. We find that a lot of them have this apparent strategy and understanding to calculate and execute a plan of engineering to make a mountaintop castle. Now, not only is the castle on the mountaintop, but through hundreds of years of weathering, it appears that the castle begins where the mountain begins, as if they are one in the same structure. And if this seems arbitrary, we must imagine the feat of engineering to create one of these castles would be over 200 years ago. Now imagine the castles that are 400, 500, 600 years ago or more, the same type of castles that are also sitting on top of these mountainsides. The rock quite literally appears to be molded or formed. We're told by the hand of God or naturally occurring, but could any of these wonderful creations, unabashed and aged, furiously it seems through weathering, could they be survivors from an ancient time which we often hear discredited today? To some scientists and historians, the answer is yes. And I quote, Earth is ancient now, but all knowledge is stored up in her. She keeps a record of everything that has happened since time began. Of time before time, she says very little, and in a language that no one has yet understood. Through time, her secret codes have gradually been broken. Her mud and lava is a message from the past. Of time to come, she says very much, but who will listen? End quote. And that is from Jeanette Winterson from the myth of Atlas and Hercules. Further, I believe the most succinct quote to help understand the overarching nature of our earthly plane is to understand at one point in our not so distant past, the highest points on earth today were covered substantially in water. It is no myth that the flood occurs in every major religion and culture worldwide. But the question becomes, can we prove that this event, 
really took place. When we listen to The Rock, it says, absolutely. Here is a quote from John McPhee, which gives us a greater understanding of the fact that we may never fully understand what has happened in the past. And I quote, The Himalayas are the crowning achievement of the Indo-Australian plate. India, in the Oligocene era, crashed head-on into Tibet, hit so hard that it not only folded and buckled the plate boundaries, but also plowed into the newly created Tibetan plateau and drove the Himalayas five and a half miles into the sky. The mountains are in some trouble. India has not stopped pushing them, and they are still going up. Their height and volume are already so great they are beginning to melt in their own self-generated radioactive heat. When the climbers, in 1953, planted their flags on the highest mountain, they set them in snow over the skeletons of creatures that had lived in a warm, clear ocean that India, moving north, blanked out. Possibly as much as 20,000 feet below the seafloor, the skeletal remains had turned to rock, petrified. This one fact is a treatise in itself on the movements of the surface of the earth. If by some fiat I had to restrict all this writing to one sentence, this is the one I would choose. The summit of Mount Everest is marine limestone." End quote. So today, we will look through the greatest rock formations found in my collection and in my research over the last few years. This includes, but is not limited to, rock walls, rock formations said to be naturally occurring, rock formations said to be man-made, rock structures, which appear to be melted rock, as well as prestigious buildings situated on top of steep rock cliffs. We will also look at rock faces or rocks that appear to be petrified remains, as well as cut rocks or cut stones, including what science calls the largest cut rock in human history. Overall, this is a thorough overview of what the old world has to offer when it comes to rock formations. From times unwritten, rock was used by our most ancient ancestors to shape the society that we see today. But could the rock formations which predate recorded history stem from a time before the Great Flood? Let's look through these 285 photographs today and I'd love to hear your theories and your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, the channel just hit 69,000 subscribers and I wanted to give you all a huge thank you. This means the world to me and I just love to see this research getting out there to more people. I can't wait to see what the future holds for the channel, but for now, I'm going to chime out on my narrative and allow us to look at these photographs and to dive deep into this photographic collection of old world rock formations. Thank you all for being here. Please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers, y'all.